Hey there viewers and welcome back to the self made auto channel sitting inside the 2014 Chevrolet it's a Sonic it's got the big one for turbo LUV engine the money lights on I'm gonna fire up the old scan tool here and I'm gonna show you guys what I looked at yesterday so it came in and it has this code for something to do with air induction pressure sensor data not being plausible so there's three sensors in the in induction system so in the intake you have the map sensor the barrel sensor and then the boost intake air temp pressure sensor and from what i read in factory service data it says that if one of these sensors is askew and the ecm can't determine which one it sets this code so i'm going to take we're going to be using the gds2 so it's going to be the factory scan tool for this car um, we're going to take a look. I'll show you what that code is. I don't remember the definition, but when I looked yesterday, it appeared that the, the boost sensor did not agree with the barrel or the map. So I'm going to show you. I ordered a new one. Uh, they're quite inexpensive. We'll see if I'm right. I know this is kind of cheesy with it pointing at the screen, but um, we'll uh, go in here, we'll let it connect. Now you're going to keep hearing a buzzing noise under the hood. The brake booster in this car is also bad, which um, kind of makes me wonder about some other things uh, do not take your eyes off the road <laughs> got it check so we're gonna go in here and, and pull codes um, I gotta get a screen recorder on here if you guys so I can pull it up on the screen for you but I don't have that quite just yet uh, let's see we're gonna oops wrong wrong button fella We're going to go into engine control module and then we're going to go to trouble codes DTC display and we have of course I had this sensor unplugged yesterday so this is why we got a bunch of these codes the original code is this P00 Charlie 7 intake air pressure management system multiple sensors not plausible all right um, it says this ignition test it, it passed and last one it passed but Let's um, let's back back out of here, and let's back back out of here. Now I'll get some data up on the screen. I'm going to show you guys what I saw, and before we even put the new sensor on, we're just going to plug it in and see if it is not as askew. So we want uh, we want Barrow, and then let me just sort these by um, we want boost pressure. And we also want map, map sensor pressure. There's map sensor pressure. So we'll lock those in. Let me enhance, enhance, enhance. All right, so hopefully you can see that a little better. So we see, well, steering wheel's hiding it, but uh, so at the very top, we've got the barrel sensor reading 14 PSI. We have the map sensor reading 14 PSI, but the boost pressure is only reading 12.7, 12.6, kind of fluctuating around there. Now, according to code criteria, if the sensor is askew more than 1.5 PSI, it sets this code. What I want to know is why is the boost pressure not reading exactly as the map pressure? So it should be reading atmospheric pressure. So long story short, I made the call on that. I've got a new one. Let's go plug it in. This thing is a bit of a piss pot to get to where it comes out of the air charge cooler way down here. Actually, I tried to get it just by hand and I could not get that sucker to come up. I couldn't I can't get the tab to release. I'm gonna reach down with some of these little guys, see if I can't get on it. Got it out yesterday without casualty. Or at least just on the plug. There we go. That worked well. So here is the connector right there. Now I got a brand new one from Chevrolet. They can put a little winky face on there for me. Here it is, made in Germany. That's the part number on it, the 555-68175. I think a couple girls back in school gave me that number for their phone number. So we're just gonna plug it in. It doesn't have to be, so this is a combo sensor pressure and air temp. We're going to be that dirtbag guy that just plugged the sensor in. See if we're right. 
So I'm just going to leave that sitting right there. Now, let me grab the scan tool. There, it's easier to grab you guys. So there we are. We have barrel, map, and boost. Kaboom! Now they're all reading correctly. They're all at the 14 to 14.1 uh, PSI range. So I'm happy with that. Sorry again about pointing it at the screen type thing. ECM detects an inconsistency between pressure sensors in the induction system in which a particular sensor cannot be identified as a failed sensor and the difference is greater than 1.5 PSI. Now ours, if you do the math, it was like 1.4, I think, something like that. It was very close to that 1.5 PSI. Now yesterday when I was driving it, I was curious to know, is uh, you know the boost sensor, is it skewed throughout its whole range? And the answer to that is yes. The map sensor and the boost sensor should match under boost and they didn't. It was always, you know, 1.4 to like 1.8 PSI variance between the two. So that's why I made the call on what I did. So here's uh, a recording because the cool thing about the GDS is it saves everything you look at. I mean everything and you got no choice. So it saves it all for you. So here's when I was ripping, pulling some boost with the old girl yesterday. Uh, I plotted the... Uh, green trace, which is going to be the boost sensor, and the blue trace is map, and the and maroon color trace is barrel, which, you know, that should stay pretty steady. But I would assume that our map and our boost should stay the same. I mean, they're both pressure sensors in the intake manifold, uh, reading uh, what we'd refer to as, you know, gauge pressure. Uh, you can see, like, where the cursor is. So you see the green trace, uh, our map is, you know, it never, it never or I'm sorry, our boost pressure never goes up to the blue trace where the map is. You know, it always mimics it, but it's always lower. And right where our, our cursor is, you know, uh, we're pulling 30 pounds of boost, 30 pounds of, or 29.1 pounds of map, and 27.7 pounds of boost. So that's, what, 1.4, something like that PSI difference. We're right on that verge of, um, you know, not being... You know, right at right on the edge near that 1.5 threshold. Now, apparently, apparently, uh, this is an intermittent problem on this car. You know, the guy says it'll go a couple of days, light will come on, it'll go off. This is the only thing I see happening right now, besides the fact this brake booster is blown out of it, which oddly enough does not affect the fuel trims. I don't get it. The brake booster on this thing is smoked, uh, but its fuel trims are dead on the money. It's kind of bizarre. Now, I'm a thinking, it looks like a torque spit in there. I think I can give it the one of those moves and hopefully get that little guy out of there. Now who in the thunder mixed up my torque bits here? Now I am a smart fella. I'm going to set that right on the floor. That way I can kick it, but then, well, they're all on the floor. And I want to see if this is the correct size. And if it is, we're going to have to do a little fangling. And then we're going to go out and boost this thing. I know all you're going to see is malleable. There is no sense in even showing you down in here because it's all going to be done by the field system. Feels like it's pretty coarse. Oh, don't drop it. Ah, there we go. There's the screw. We'll stick this right up here. I had to switch ratchets. That Mac one I have, it's uh doesn't like to hold bits anymore. There's a little spring in it that's going rogue on me. Let's see. Going AWOL, I guess. Ah, there we are. So we'll pop that out. There it is. Ooh, it's got oil and oil on it. It's been oil contaminated. So there's that. He did tell me he just had to replace the valve cover because the uh, PCV in it went bad something thereabouts and it was whistling through the uh, rear main seal it makes me wonder how much oil has gone through the induction system there's that one we'll get the new one I'll lube up that o-ring there she is all screwed on like I say it's reachable it's just a little bit of a pain in the ho-ho and then I'm gonna take we're gonna get the connector plugged back in Hard to show you because I can't see myself. We're going to just do it all by feel. <laughs> We're going to 
we're gonna go out and spool up the turbo. Blow some boost, roll some coal. I don't know what the kids say nowadays for the, uh, oh, I can't show you my secret code. You guys see, you can't see crap. There we go, let's try this again. Amateur hour. I'm gonna change my values over here so they all read the same. And 30 should be the good number for us. Good even number. Okay. This way here we're all on the same line. Uh, boost pressure, why? 30-30. Map pressure is lower because it's under vacuum, you ding dong. Okay, green is going to be our desired boost. Red will be our actual boost. And blue is going to be map. And I'm going to let it take and um, go into a super deep record. Not super deep, but good enough where we can just pause it on a test drive and have a little gander at it. Okay? I think that's as far as it goes, fella. Nope, it's not. Oh, there we go. GD dude cannot be closed. Oh, I didn't want to close it. Okay. Ooh, baby. Okay, hang on, fellas. In the words of Rango, let's ride. Hopefully when I'm ripping, ripping boost and spooling, you guys don't fall over. This is a 1.4 liter. Should match when we're when we're ripping on a big pole. I'm pretty sure that's not what the kids are pole grabbing on, fellas. I think that's what the kids call it, pulling. I think do they pull boost? These cards are turning. It looks like we're gonna have to hammer on it to get out here. Too. This is the rip we did from the stop sign. The uh, blue trace again is a map and our um, maroon color trace is boost pressure. And you can see now, compared to what you looked at in the video a few minutes ago, it is exactly the same. Now our green trace is desired boost pressure. Uh, I'm here to tell you that's, you know, well within its limits. Uh, you never see them right smack on top of each other. Uh, particularly when you, you know, you whomp on the throttle, desired boost is gonna go up to where you know it's trying to regulate it at and you know you'll see at some points it, it touches but these must be shift points here maybe that's when it shifted uh, you know desired and actual came within their limits but uh, if that's not achieved it sets a different code than what we have right now so I guess what I'm getting at is based on code criteria and you know what we saw um, 
I'm gonna call it a fix before we you know go any further just to see the sensor was 100% askew and it does fit code criteria so uh, I'm gonna try and run it through a drive cycle like I, I normally do all vehicles before I return them and just to be 100% certain so I did I did come in to check for specific DTCs where you can type in the DTC to see if that test is ran and being that this is continuously monitored uh, I assumed it was gonna but you know we have a you know pass pass and pass so currently the code we're after is you know has ran its test and passed and that was the only code that was in it when I started uh, so I can go drive it a little bit and let it you know continually rerun uh, just to see give it some different you know driving situations all right folks went out did some more boosting did some more key cycles because it seems to run at the uh, key on engine off key cycle uh, when it compares those three sensors so uh, everything seems to to work uh, pretty happy with it I'm gonna give it back to the customer let them drive it I got all the drive cycle done except what didn't it run it did not run the evap and I th think O2 I can't remember it was all but two monitors but uh, regardless the, car the code we came after is now come up consistently as passed uh, multiple times so We'll see. Hopefully our service data is correct and didn't lead us down the wrong path, but you can see from the data collected versus the new data now, sensor was definitely askew, so uh, you know, no harm, no foul there. Anyhow, you guys go down below, click subscribe, ring that bell, leave a comment, question, criticism, concern, and just remember viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.